Call to order the Board of the Housing Authority of Clackamas County. Uh, clerk, will you ask our resident commissioner, Ann Leenstra, to join us? She is there. She is there. Oh, good. Welcome, Ann. Thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The board is designated as a governing body of the Housing Authority and will act as the budget committee. Will the members of the committee please introduce themselves? Good afternoon, Commissioner Mark Shaw. Sonia Fisher, Clackamas County Commission. And uh, Lane Strauss, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ann. <laughs> Uh, Ann Leinstra, Housing Authority. Thank you. Chair Tootie Smith. Commissioner Martha Schrader. Commissioner Paul Savas. And I believe that's it. I will now ask Tony Carter, Housing Operations Manager for the Housing Authority, to present the budget message. Good afternoon, Commissioners. The Housing Authority has a unique and distinct role in the continuum to end and prevent homelessness, and that is presented in today's budget. If you consider the continuum a three-part strategy where there are boots on the ground connecting to the houseless, that is the support of housing services, social services, nonprofits, and contracts, and that is in the county H3S budget. That is not in the Housing Authority budget. If you could also consider from there, they go to a coordinated housing access and get connected to shelters such as the Veteran Village, Annie Ross House, or hotel and motel assistance, transitional housing, temporary rent assistance, or temporary energy assistance. That again is a supportive housing services, social services budget, and is in the H3S budget. That would not be in our housing authority budget. We are the connection to permanent housing. And HAC's budget and role consists of basically three parts. That which we own, which is public housing and affordable housing. That which we administer, which is rent assistance. And that which we facilitate, which is development and increasing development of affordable housing within the county. I'm sorry, don't know how to use PowerPoint. Okay. Um, our major accomplishments for the year is through our development and our Metro bond measure, we have increased and started work on 462 new units of affordable housing in our county. Tukwila Springs, also known as Webster Road, is 48 units. Fuller Road Station, 100 units. Both of these properties will be opening this summer to house individuals. We also broke ground on Good Shepherd Village, 143 units, and Maple Apartments, 171 units, will be opening, will be breaking ground later this summer. Under the support of housing services, again, I want to point out that budget will no longer be part of the Housing Authority budget, but is within the H3S budget. But through that program, we are getting basically a grant to run the rent assistance program known as the Regional Long-Term Rent Assistance Program. In the slide, you'll notice that we housed 69 individuals. Since then, already, these slides are obsolete. We've housed 100 homeless individuals and now have 85 homeless individuals working with case management to find housing. So we are well on target to meet the goal of housing 200 households by the end of the year, along with our partner agencies in the metro region. We acquired 41 new emergency housing vouchers and housed all 41 and were the first in the nation to do that. We also were uh, awarded 50 new foster youth to independence vouchers and are in the process of identifying those units, those, those youth graduating out of foster care to get into housing. Under our performance Clackamas measures, um, you will see we're projected for the fiscal year and to have stable housing for 99.5% of our housing. I wish I could say that was all of our own good work, but I have to take into account that there were COVID moratoriums that were protecting our families, and there's less movement overall within <clears throat> our families to move around due to COVID. So it's likely the more realistic goal of 90% for next year is in place. 
And then for our development goal, by 2025, we are supposed to be increasing affordable housing by 1,500 units, and we are well on our way. If you look at the pre-development, we have been doing really well each year. And for next year, we are to have 702 new units in pre-development, 474 units will be under construction, and 484 units are planned to be completed. Under the program profiles, um, this is all of our funds are 100% restricted. They are fed, mostly federal and metro bond measure funds, and they're restricted to the use for housing. If you look under the percentage of program operated the, by the county, the 7.6%, that is actually the allocated costs we pay back to the county for services such as legal services, technology services, and payroll services. So that is the 7.6% that is actually county operated. Um, if you look at the metrics target, meet or exceed or improved at 57%, that measurement looks awful. If you saw on the slides before, we did exceed all of our measures on the two slides before. But this metric measures how we are aligning with the BCC priorities of growing a vibrant economy, and we distribute upwards of $18 million of federal funds to private market landlords that definitely boosters our local economy. And we ensure safe and healthy and secure communities by providing housing options to the most vulnerable. And we build trust through good government by having these transparent meetings every third Thursday of the month. We are a separate legal entity from the county and we do not use county general fund, but rather pay for services we use. The majority of our revenue is coming from the Metro bond measure this year. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I go too far? Oh, it's missing. Oh, there it is. It's out of a different order. Sorry. Um, while the programs continue to be a while federal programs continue to be a significant part of our funding for the Housing Authority, they are not growing at the same pace as our local resources. Public housing funds have remained flat for the past year, while HUD voucher programs have increased through the issuance of special vouchers, such as the VASH Veteran Housing, Mainstream Voucher, Foster Youth Vouchers, and Emergency Housing Vouchers, all of which we have been successfully funded with additional vouchers every year. Development projects make up a large portion of the disbursement that HACC expects to make over the year. As you can see on the pie chart, that is the largest portion of our budget for the next coming years. And um, I also want to point out the Regional Long-Term Rent Assistance Program is 2%. It's just part of the Rent Assistance Program overall that is the big gray part of the pie. So looking at our summary of revenue and expenses, you will see our dwelling rent is anticipated to go up by 20.8%. As the economy continues to rebound and income starts to return for our public housing residents, we are seeing an increase in their ability to pay more rent. They have to pay 30% of their income on rent. So if they are employed, that means they're paying a larger portion of the rent. Operating subsidy is pretty flat at 8.6%, but our housing assistance payments, that is the federal voucher programs, the rent assistance programs, as I told you, those are increasing, and we are seeing a 17% increase in the rent assistance programs we're getting from the federal government. Part of the reason we're getting that is because the tri-county area um, challenged the fair market rents that the HUD put out for our area. We said they were far too low for what we're seeing in the rental market, and we were successful in our challenge, and they gave us a 12% increase in our fair market rents based upon that challenge. So it was definitely worth challenging. Um, you will see the PLP county funds are reduced by 100%. That is because those funds are being um, combined with the supportive housing services funds and will now be in the H3S budget and no longer in the Housing Authority budget. Um, 
long-term rent assistance program, it shows an 87.2% decrease. And I want to explain that we decreased that because we were being conservative, not knowing what the tax revenues would be at the point in time when we were doing this budget. We have since seen that the tax revenues are coming in for the Supportive Housing Services Program, so we will be doing a supplemental budget after July 1st when we have more firm numbers that would probably be getting that number back up to about the $10 million point. But we're waiting to see what those numbers come in in the Supportive Housing Services budget. Personnel services are up 23% because we are ramping up for the new long-term rent assistance program and because we are seeing an increased need in development to add staffing. Materials and services we are hoping will go down by 23%. And the housing assistance payments, of course, are going up by the amount we are given. We're, we're actually in the housing authority is unique in that HUD will actually, it's a good thing to spend 100% of your budget. It's a bad thing if you spend less than 98% of your budget. We're considered a high performer if we spend all our money, so we're planning to spend it all and help everyone we can with that money. And our debt service, while it looks like a large decrease of 74.6%, public housing cannot carry debt. So um, we don't really have a lot of debt service, so that decrease is only $600. So as I had said, the general fund, we don't, we don't have any general fund. And you'll see that our budget overall has decreased from 74 million to 69 million. And that is primarily because we took out almost the $5 million loan that we took out for the Supportive Housing Services Grant um, out of our budget. And again, that's being put in the H3S budget. And that is the most significant thing that's going to be the change in our budget is that we last year had supportive housing services in our budget and this year we do not. And that's the end of my presentation. Rod, would you like to make any comments? You don't have none, to. Yeah, I'm none just, at this time, thank you. Maybe somebody wants to ask you a question. I will now entertain questions from my commissioners. Commissioner Fisher, you are up. Thank you, Chair Smith. <coughs> what is PLP, what does that stand for? Policy level package. Ah, yes, thank you. That was the one thing when you were talking, I was like, wait, I don't know what that is. I um, am really happy to see the streamlining and consolidation of the continuum of services for um, shelter, homeless services. I think that's really good. Question about the, um, I just wanna make sure I've got this in my brain right. In the revenue source for long-term rental assistance program, RLRA, what are the um, revenue streams for that? Is that supportive housing services dollars fully? Fully. It's okay. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you very much. Commissioner Shaw. Yes. Uh, on your uh, metro bond funds shifting over to uh, support, supportive housing. Do they also get some FTEs from you? Yes, they get a large, they're, they're still building. Their program did not hire up until they were seeing the tax revenue base. So they'll, they're projected to hire up this year a lot. But are you gonna give up some FTEs? Yes. Okay. We're not actually giving them up. We're giving them to Rod. What was that, Tony? <laughs> We're not actually giving yeah, it's, them it's up. It's more We're of giving a tr them to transfer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I mean, a transfer. Yeah, good, okay. Transferring from one mm -hmm. area to another just good. to yeah, keep good. these services going. Any other questions for my commissioners? Thank you. Yeah, I do. Yeah, Paul, go ahead. So um, I'm looking at uh, what page six, um, and I'm looking at fiscal year 1920, the actual, the, mid the middle line there, 25 million. Um, 2021 was 39 million, and then 21-22, maybe you already answered this or said this, but I didn't catch it, so I apologize if you already mentioned it. But I, I see what's, what's budgeted is significantly higher than what the actual is, dating back to last year. So what, 
what's the what was different about the 39 million of the uh, from the fiscal year 2021 to the fiscal year budgeted? Why was it 74 million dollars, or basically um, what 40, 34 million dollars higher than the previous year budgeted? That's supportive housing services funds. The supportive but they, housing but they funds. Were ne they were never that high. It, it's what we budgeted, but it, we budgeted it never came to we, fruition. We budgeted $10 million. Yeah. I'm not sure what the board approved back in 1920, but that's, that's what that number is trying to capture. Okay. So if you, look down, if you look down to um, that $10 million even number, that's what we budgeted last year. We budgeted $10 million. We, we didn't budget. We didn't budget 30, 34 million. Paul, what page are you on? Page six. Page six. Okay. And and you have it, and it, then it bumps up to this year. Well, it goes down a little bit by by uh, by four, almost five million, and 69 million. Uh, Commissioner, I think you're, it's also capturing. There's a bond to build facilities with, and then there's the supportive housing services funds. Those were both Metro bond, and sometimes those get confused when we're talking about it. Part of it was to build, and we still have those funds, and then the other was supportive housing services, and I believe it was all blended in, in there. Actually, yeah. Um, I just a moment. I'm gonna let Elizabeth Comfort uh, comment on this, please. <clears throat> I believe we kept those two separate, but yes. Um, uh, we are correct that the bond funds are a separate, and I think that is the 34 million. We did have 10 for the support of housing, and I we need to go check, and I apologize. I think we may have a miscategorization title here of the long-term rental assistance program. I believe that was the support of housing, 10 million. Right, right. That's, that's where I was thrown off a little yeah. bit. So I, I do see, Rod, you're right. I do see the 34 million in the Metro bond funds. But that it's a ten million. That's that was actually the budgeted amount for SHS. Okay. Do we need any other points of clarification on that? Or are you okay? I'm okay. All right. I, I, as long as it's corrected by the time it's if it, if it is an error in, in citing, then just yep. we'll have it fixed by. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you for catching that. Any other questions uh, for this group? <clears throat> <clears throat> I will now open the public hearing. I will get, begin with those present in the room. I don't see any. Tony, do we have anybody on the Zoom? Madam Chair, at this time, there is no one pre-registered to speak. If there is anyone who would like to testify, please use the raise hand feature, and I will call on you in the order received. Madam Chair, at this time, I do not have any hands raised. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any further questions or discussions? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Shull. Well, let's see here. Which page were we? <clears throat> Hold on a second. I move that the committee approve the 2022-2023 budget for the Housing Authority of Clackamas County in the amount of Sixty-nine million eight hundred ninety thousand nine hundred and seventy-three dollars. Period. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Scholl and seconded by Commissioner Fisher that the committee approve the 2022-2023 budget for the Housing Authority of Clackamas County in the amount of $69,890,973. Is there any questions? What does it feel like, Commissioner Scholl, to spend all that money? Well, it's to help a lot of people, and that's, that's what feels good about it. <laughs> good answer. Great answer. <laughs> Any further discussions or questions? Hearing none, uh, would the clerk please call the poll? Commissioner Leenstrom? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ann Leedstra, for showing up and voting. Uh, is there any further business before this committee? Hearing none, this committee is adjourned.